Hello everyone, welcome back to another movie analysis where I give you the basic rundown of movies and or critically pick them apart. Part 3 of the Halloween edition. And today we're going to be taking a look at whether or not this movie holds up to the test of time. This is directed toward my younger audience members for this part only. If you are going to watch this movie to be scared for a good horror filled time. Do not watch it. You will not be you will not be satisfied. You will be heavily disappointed by this movie because unfortunately as modern audiences we have been spoiled and will not find it scary. Starting off, this movie is rather short, but it's also got these huge long drawn out sequences. I'm actually going to be referring to my notes sometimes in this. And we don't actually get a death after Michael Myers' sister until 54 minutes in of an hour and a half movie, 54 minutes of suspense. That is a problem. You cannot build suspense for 54 minutes and give us nothing. Scratch that, you give us nudity. But unfortunately, nudity is not horror. So that is a problem I have with this movie. Not only is the movie long, you have sequences and scenes in the movie that are just drawn out for no reason. It, why? I don't care about what this person is doing, okay? I don't care about their conversation. I don't care about what these high schoolers are going to be doing later in the day. I don't care, um, I don't care about these camera shots in which they don't know that Michael Myers is there, but we know he's there. It's tense for us, but the fact that they're not tense makes us uncomfortable. But you can't have that and just use that for horror unless you're building to something. But again, it is building to something for 50 Four minutes. Do you have any idea how long 54 minutes is when you are watching a movie with nothing happening except suspense? It's a heart attack. I imagine that back in the day, this would be completely terrifying and just nonstop edge of your seat terror. But as for someone who is used to seeing death within the first five minutes, you got that going. And then usually another death or something, a surprise for the next like maybe 10 minutes in intervals. This is just horrible. You have this completely long drawn out segment of... Oh, look, he's in a car. Oh, look, he stops the car. Okay, bye bye now. And he just keeps doing it. Why? There's a scene in which he stops a child and then does nothing. There's a scene in which he just stands there. There's actually many scenes in which he's just standing there. That's not scary. We know he's scary. We know it. So it's tense for us. But if they're not reacting to it and they're not getting more tense then by God, you are not making the movie more tense. You are drawing out your sequences. My book and my math book and my English book and my, let's see, my French book. And, well, who needs books anyway? I don't need books. I, I always forget all of my books. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really matter if you have your books or not. Hey, isn't that Devon Graham? Shut up. Like, this, this is one of the scenes I'm talking about. You just keep talking. Why? You talk over what is supposed to be tense. Now, if everyone was like watching this, that would kind of make this more tense, but you just have these people that are just talking over what scenes should be important. There is a scene in the movie in which we are finally getting some good plot. This is what we needed more of. At 39 minutes in, you finally have a breakdown of what Michael Myers is like as a person. He is cold. He is distant. He is evil. He is death personified. But that's the thing. We get that 39 minutes in. That is a long time to sit <laughs> and question whether or not we should be afraid of him or he can be stopped. You, yeah, you see a death of the fruit vendor and that's all fine and dandy. But the problem is we're not afraid of that. Or we shouldn't be at least as a modern day audience. Now back then murder was still kind of touchy and a no-no. In fact, nudity in a film was a no-no. And that's why this movie is so highly rated as um, rated R. Another problem I have with this movie is it had this bad acting. Now, the acting itself wasn't bad as in cheesy. It was bad in the sense of it was 70s hyper-realistic acting. This film had so many bad camera shots, and I don't know why. 
you had a very good style camera back then. But you still had these camera shots that were drawn out and long and distanced away from who you're filming. Normally you'd want to get up close and so we can actually see what they're doing. But in this case, you have so many shots that are from Michael's perspective. You're watching as though you're the killer. You're not creating a lack of sympathy. You are creating a sympathetic killer. I know that Carpenter's main claim was that he wanted a character, or a killer rather, that you don't relate to, but you do. Because you are watching through his eyes. Now, you don't know his motives, but you're watching him. Now, many can argue that this is a disconnect and you're watching a killer helpless and unable to stop as he basically goes on a rampage and kills everybody. But I disagree, and you're welcome to disagree with me as well. But these are some reasons why the movie doesn't hold up to the test of time. And that's what we were talking about. On top of that, it's just the special effects that we're so spoiled to. When you stab somebody, they don't really get stabbed on camera. It's off camera, or rather out of the shot. And then you turn around and the knife is in him. Like when Bob is pinned to the wall. You don't really see that. It just kind of happens and you're like, oh, he's hanging. Is he choking? Oh no, there's a knife through his chest. Well, golly gosh. That happens, guys. That happens. In that movie, however, no matter how you want to look at it, this horror movie is still a horror classic. Whether or not it holds up to the test of time, you have to acknowledge that it started a trend and has many tropes and characteristics that we still use today. This movie is a cinematic and historical masterpiece. Is it still good today? I think it is as a nostalgia, but as for actual horror today, unfortunately, I think Michael Myers' days are done, unless they can find some way to reboot him. That's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you all for watching so much, and remember, I will see you all next time. Peace.